So I've done a lot in the last 10 years. And the winner is Seso. So I felt like it was a pretty good time to start sharing what I wish I knew before I started graphic design. So let's jump into it. Number one, it's probably the most important one for people who want to achieve more clients, maybe network, and it goes as followed. The only difference between growing your personal brand and staying stagnant is choosing to act on the opportunities that present themselves. That's it. That's the entire game in a nutshell. Also kind of where I think manifesting comes from, taking an idea and making it top of mind so that opportunity does come, you're ready to take it. However, now opportunity scouting in itself is sort of like a lesson or like a skill on its own. And opportunities themselves come in many different forms. Sometimes an opportunity is about noticing when something can be better and putting yourself out there as the unaware solution. That could be logo design, web design, digital event, whatever it might be. I can actually recall a moment where like a major event, like three to 400,000 people were like watching this every week. Week. And the event was called Friday Fortnite. It was like the peak of Fortnite and everyone was just playing this really fun tournament with streamers online every week. Now for some clarity, eight years ago, and even really now, I don't really declare myself as like a logo designer. I just, I put it in my packages and I can execute on them, right? But I saw an opportunity, unprovoked by the way, to design a logo for an event that I felt like it needed more legitimacy since it was so dope and epic, but it didn't have a face. I ended up tweeting this logo out to then long story short, getting my logo seen by millions of people that honestly also secured me like around 5,000 in logo orders that I recently probably never even charged more than $150 for just one logo. So that was a win. But also sometimes an opportunity is about being faster, faster to share, faster to communicate, and even faster to execute. I've always put my best efforts when someone sends me money in exchange for a quality service, right? Since that's really what design is, it's, it's a service. But it's to the point that I do this service so well, I have clients who find and message me, sometimes asking me to take over a project that has already been sold to an agency, just because either I communicate better or I can execute faster on it. That's it. And the pay doesn't get lower either. But other times, an opportunity could be about using a connection that you've made to get your voice heard. So the reason why someone who starts their design career tomorrow and might have a larger client list than yours next year is because they simply acted on those found opportunities. Don't forget that. At the end of the day, you are a creative. You already have the special ability to see something differently. Now for number two. Now this one might sound weird, so stick with me. But when you are aiming for higher titles and positions, don't complain, pretend. You've all probably heard fake it till you make it, right? But it's it's for a few reasons. And I, for one, am a super, super victim of this. But we've all been in those scenarios. You tend to your job like a normal day, but there's always something structure-wise, intake-wise, maybe even like output-wise that just bothers you to the point where it might unfortunately be so hard to ignore and it starts to take away from your own work because of it. Because this is not for everyone, but step into the role that you want before it's yours, especially if it's available. Oh, but it's not my job, says so. Sure. But let me put it to you like this. A great designer is 10% amazing visual executionist. Is that English? You get the point. But then 90% is everything else. Storytelling, communication, brand tone, marketing and strategy, et cetera, all that stuff. So if there are opportunities in your job where you can land a hand in those fields that you are not familiar with 100%, but maybe in a future it's in a role in which that you feel as if you'd be connected to or maybe associate with, you should do it. For example, okay, I was a visual art director for social. This meant my primary focus was to create dope shit with purpose for campaigns and specific sports throughout the month until I started noticing some things like misalignments in the social tone, of course, with the designs that I was creating, or sometimes it was me getting bothered by the lack of immediate acknowledgement of like cultural moments, or even just something as simple as the content creation that we were posting on YouTube or TikTok or Twitter was just not aligning with the art direction of the visuals that we were designing for. So this is where I step into it. I landed creative direction on all fronts until later on leadership just noticed and gave me a title for it and a pay raise. Now, obviously that example is very entrepreneurial startup coded, but for many of us, that's honestly where a lot of us will get our start. So long story short, if you see a place where you can fill a gap, fill it and learn. Because I did that. I gained massive amount of like manager reps, learned a lot about storytelling and basically in association, just learned a lot of other art mediums and feedback structures that I would have normally never had to do. But now in roles that I look forward to actually applying to all this stuff is incredibly valuable knowledge that I now have access to. So kind of like a, like a lesson 2.5, make sure you know where you want to go. It makes your path to success in the world of design career a lot easier to pinpoint and a lot less time wasted. And you can still have fun along the way. And now for number three, the everything pack. <laughs> 
It is the ultimate graphic design bundle created by myself with all the assets up to 400, I think it's like 400 plus, 32 different design products in one design bundle that can honestly instantly help you in your career, but that's not the actual number three. But if you do want to check it out, it's the first link in the description down below. But for the actual number three, it, it's, it's so dumb, but a lot of you guys need to hear this. Organization will save your life and potentially your career. What do I mean? I'm talking about your client intake system, your feedback structure, maybe file management, task allocation, th things like that, right? And the reason why it matters so much is because it's not only your perceived service value, where you're gonna kind of look prepared in every lane, but it's also value to yourself when you're navigating a very complicated world of tracking and delivering. For example, right, the client intake period. A simple, even mental system might look something like this, right? It looked like a quick noted brief, maybe from the client to kind of gauge interest on in whether or not this product is right for you. Then from there, meeting on the actual brief, getting more details and locking in what the actual scope of work looks like. Afterwards, taking a few hours or some days to give an actual proposal on that scope of work, meaning the price on the amount of work and deliverables that there are. And then for a client to say yes or no, and then that's when you schedule your weekly or bi-weekly check-ins of where you're at in the progress. Now, for, for my professional out there if we were just watching this for fun, thank you. But for the majority of the time, people do not have a structure or are basically left solving per client. And a lot of the times also just kind of looking silly in the moment or just kind of unprofessional. Or worst case, not worth the price. You gotta have systems for those. But also there's presentations, right? They're not just some like old head organization buzzword. They of course sell the design. And in other words, they sell the time that you spent. So if the presentation was bad, that's time wasted essentially because you missed the target or you couldn't explain your visual decisions clear enough. And now for those systems, we're talking Figma, Google Slides, Canva, whatever you use basically. But also you could be the person sending a very vague three page PDF with no explanation, just hoping to receive a all good on number two or something. Fat, fat L. Presentation itself is a system. It might take you a few tries to get that perfect walkthrough and what made that client go ooh and ah, but dissect that and create a system in which you can do that and repeat that process a bunch more times. Also, where do you write feedback? Do you do it directly on the presentation in Figma and like comments? Do you use Notion notes? Do you sort of direct message yourself on a random private Discord server, just me, cool. But let me tell you this, nothing's worse than having waited a week because you're super busy and then messaging the client and asking them, what were you doing again? Yeah, hell no. Get comfortable with your suite of programs, okay? They will keep you on track and keep your clients and contracts incredibly happy. Now with that, that is the end of the video here today. I don't even know how long this is, but hopefully there's some, some good information, good examples, something for you guys to stick to. We're gonna click off this video and have something you can execute on or do better for yourself in the future. But with that, that is Seso HQ out. Do not forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking better, guys. Let much love. Peace. And don't forget, check out the first link in the description down below. Don't wait. No reason, really, besides it's just super dope. If you need dope, professional, genuine assets that can really assist you in your art directions, this will do it. And also, just for the record, every new design pack that I release, no matter the price, gets emailed directly to you for free. So you should get it. Peace.